what will be Mr. Griswold's fate. Forgotten, save only by those whom he has injured and insulted, he will sink into oblivion without leaving a landmark to tell us that he once existed. Or, if he is spoken of hereafter, he will be quoted as the unfaithful servant who abused his trust. Come in, Edgar. Did you read it? Did you read it yet? Well, yes I did, Edgar. And frankly, well, I think it's a lot of humbug. Humbug? It's a concept, like Reynolds' idea of the hollow earth. It's a hypothesis of the possibility of the universe. Hollow earth. Oh, humbug, poppycock, and balderdash. Fairy tale. Fairy tales. <laughs> Are you forgetting, Pim? That made us some money. Uh, it took you ages, and it's never been as successful as your short story. Yes, Edgar. You need to concentrate on your short stories. Then, when we bring out the collection, we'll sell thousands. You're losing your grip. You're losing your notoriety. You dangle that collection like an ever-ripening carrot in front of my eyes, but you do nothing to make it a reality. I'm tired of these short stories. I'm tired of writing stories. This is what I want to do. Eureka, the original unity of all things. The beginning of the universe from a single particle and then... Just like that, Rufus. <laughs> Just like that. Yes, well, that's all a bit much for me, Edgar. I am a businessman, and that business is publishing, and I know what will sell and what will not. I know that, Rufus, but I am just bursting to finish this. As usual, I need to pull you back to reality. You need to work at putting food on the table, Edgar. Yes, Rufus, it's true. You always pull me back. You're a good publisher. You know that you need guidance, Edgar. Structure. I need to not be worried about money and putting food on my table. Ah, you need to make me your trustee. I will handle your affairs. I will set you right. You think me a cad, sir. Why would I trust you with my affairs? Well, I do wish you wouldn't uh, take such pot shots at my other writers. A hack is a hack. And they don't call me the tomahawk without reason. Yes, but must you tomahawk my other writers? You know that I also need them to make money in order for me too to put food on the table. <laughs> it's how I do manage from time to time to eat. And pray tell, good sir, how is it that you think I would help you with sentiments like this? The poets and poetry of America. Did anyone read such nonsense? We never did, and shall hereafter issue everything that bears Rufus Wilmot Griswold's name. Mr. G belongs to the class called Toady. Really, sir? Where is Professor Walter, Morton McMichael, Robert Morris, another sweet poet, the Reverend T. H. Stockton, and Dr. English? All these gentlemen should be gratified at their non-appearance in the volume before us. For if ever such a thing as literary ruin existed or exists, nine-tenths of the poets of America are ruined forever by the praise of Mr. Griswold. I rest my case. I stand by those views. Where were those men in this paltry work? As the saying goes, if the shoe fits. Well, at least my shoes are not threadbare. It is your greed that feeds you, sir. And Mr. Tomahawk, would this not incite a little softening of the blow? It will, no doubt, put some food on the table and likewise replenish your footwear. You are a cad, sir. But as you say, these things must be done. What need have I of your misfortunes of the pen? This eureka nonsense is for the lunatics, not for me. I and Edgar. No one knows the truth of our relationship. 
but we. This is treachery, sir. But a fortuitous one for you, my friend. For we shall go down in history, connected, you clinging to my coattails. You have my word. But I shall sign no papers with you ever. Then so be it!